Hi everyone, Mary here and we're going to spend some time in this video reviewing the metric system. I know that you have studied it in elementary school and junior high and high school and probably in a couple of your college courses, but science uses the metric system and it is not as common in our everyday lives. Uh, most of us grew up in the United States and in the US we have been dominated with, with feet and miles and pounds and because of that the metric system is not as common or as comfortable as it should be. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about it. A little history. Long ago and far away, people measured things with whatever was handy. Um, a foot was approximately the length of a foot. Um, an inch was one of your thumb joints. A cubit from the old, those of you who are biblical scholars, uh, Noah was told to build the ark so many cubits by so many cubits, and a cubit is an elbow to fingertip. If you weren't doing anything precise, this, this worked, and it worked beautifully. The challenge was by the 1700s, science had elevated, science was getting better, and there was a gentleman in France named Antoine Lavoisier, and Lavoisier is considered by many the father of modern chemistry. He also invented the metric system. What happened was Lavoisier set up a lab and he invited great minds from all over Europe to come to his lab and work and collaborate. And eventually these people would go home. Well, when they went home, they had to have a way of communicating what they were discovering about their experiments. That means they had to have a consistent system of units. And so they invented the metric system. And the metric system is based on two things, the number 10 and water. If you need a compound, if you need a substance that is everywhere on planet Earth, water fits the bill. And you're going to find as the course unfolds, there are many, many places where water is just vitally built into the metric system. It's so nifty. By the 1960s, the 1700s version of the metric system had really gotten out of sync we needed something much more accurate. So it was modernized. And when they modernized it, they made the definitions much more precise. A meter is the distance that light travels in so much time. A second is defined by the number of times a cesium-133 atom actually oscillates or vibrates. A kilogram is a physical platinum object, and there are a variety of them all over the world kept at international, ver, um, international museums of standards. So this was the modern version of the metric system for modern age using much more precise and accurate tools. One little thing before we continue, and that's the SI label. Why is the International System of Units called the SI system? And it's called the SI system because this was developed in France and they put the adjective after the noun. So it was referred to as the system international. And because of that system international, you and I call it the SI system. The basic metric units I know you're familiar with, mass, grams, volume, liters, Length, meters. The old metric system used Celsius as the temperature, and in the modern SI system, we use the Kelvin as our measurement of temperature. Time is still seconds. The metric prefixes. Um, this range of metric prefixes, of course, there are some that are larger and some that are smaller. These are the ones that I'm going to assume you know that if you see in homework, um, something happens in 5 ms that you are able to say, ah, that's 5 milliseconds. If something occurs in 3,000 megagrams, that you know what mega and milli are. Now, some people like the actual numbers and fractions. Some people like decimals. And some people like powers of 10. So giga is 10 to the uh, ninth. Mega is 10 to the 6th, kilo is 10 to the 3rd. The basic units go up and down by 3. Milli is 10 to the negative 3, micro is 10 to the negative 6, and nano 10 to the negative 9th. Deci and centi are still common, but 
They are a little different pattern, deci as in decibel, decimal, there are 10 in 1, so this is 10 to the negative 1, and centi as in century, uh, 100 years in a century, is 10 to the negative 2. There are two kinds of units that you're going to see in science. In physics, we tend to use what we refer to as the MKS system of units, meters, kilograms, and seconds. If you have taken a chemistry class in the past, you may have used the CGS system, centimeters, grams, and seconds. Why do chemists use smaller units typically and physicists use larger units? Well, we're dealing with planets and pickup trucks and big things. Uh, chemists are working with atoms and small quantities of substance in a beaker. So the units are adaptable to whatever you happen to be measuring. Let's talk about converting within the metric system. Um, I'm going to show you a system that is simple. If you are good at another system, yay for you, and keep using it. But this is a system that, and that's the number line system, that I have found has worked for me and many of my students through the years. So if you draw a number line and you put a extra big thick line every third one, in the middle this is going to represent the base. And what are my base units? Typically grams, liters, and meters. The first big thick line to the right is for milli, the next one is micro, and the third is nano. To the left, kilo, mega, and capital G for giga. And two more that are common, deci and centi. Now, how do you use this beast? Well, you use it by moving decimals back and forth. So, so let me show you. If I've got 147 centimeters and I want to go to meters, I start at centi and I'm going to my base and I know it's base because there's only one letter. So I'm going to go one, two to the left. There is an implied decimal right here. One, two to the left. 1.47 meters. Kilograms to grams. I'm on kilo. I'm going to my base grams. One, two, three to the right. One, two, three to the right. And what do I put in my little swoopies here? Zeros. 4,500 grams. All right, hit pause, try these, and we'll come back in a second, and I'll give you the answers and see if you're right. All right, here goes. This is going to be 0 0.0174 liters, 930 centimeters, 0 0.188 meters, 42,600 grams, and 13 millimeters. How'd you do? All right, cool. I bet you did really well. One more topic I want to talk about before we leave the metric system is the metric system was invented. It didn't just grow organically. It was actually set up from the beginning. And because of that, they were, the mass, volume, length were all intertwined. And boy, is that handy if you're trying to figure stuff out. Let me show you what I mean. If you've got a rectangular solid and you want to know the volume, well, volume is going to be length times width times height. So if I have a cube that's one centimeter wide times one centimeter high times one centimeter deep, if I multiply those three together, I'm going to end up with one centimeter to the third power because I've got three centimeters. Well, that is one cubic centimeter. The metric system was invented so that the length units of cubic centimeters and the volume units of milliliters, this equaled exactly the same thing. Put a little box around this, write it down in your notes, put a little star by it. Boy, is that a useful thing to know. Now, what's a cc? cc stands for cubic centimeter. Where do you see cc's? I see them in medication. Um, if a child has a cold and you're told to give the child so many cc's of cough syrup, it basically means cubic centimeters. But these three are exactly the same amount of volume. So if I've got 39.2 milliliters, how many cc's is that? 39.2. Isn't that slick? 
If I've got 1.7 cubic centimeters, how many milliliters? 1.7. If I've got 150 cc's, how many liters is that? Hmm, i got to think about this one. Okay, cubic centimeters and liters don't go together directly, but I know that this is 150 milliliters. Then I can move my decimal, 1, 2, 3, and I end up with 0.15 liters. What if I go in the opposite direction? I've got liters to cubic centimeters. I know this is 680 milliliters by going 1, 2, 3 with my decimal, and that is equal to cubic centimeters. Once you have this down, very, very powerful piece of knowledge. Another thing built into the metric system was the water connection. And this water connection has to do with mass. Here's how it works. One gram of water is the volume of one milliliter of water. And one kilogram of water has a volume of one liter of water. Now, those of you who've had some chemistry, both of these measurements are at standard temperature and pressure. So there you go. We'll talk more about that further in the course. So put stars by this. This is important stuff to write down because once you've got this, boy, do you know stuff without having to do any math. Let's take a look. If I've got 53.6 milliliters of water, how many grams is that? 53.6. Cool, huh? 7.2 grams of water is how many milliliters? 7.2. Okay, let's think about this. What's the approximate mass of a 2-liter soda? Well, 1 liter is about a kilogram, so this soda is going to be approximately 2 kilograms of mass. Do you think the whole bottle of soda pop here is going to be more than 2 kilograms or less than 2 kilograms? Oh yeah, probably a little bit more. Why? Well, the plastic bottle. Um, the sugar molecules in here have mass, and we didn't account for those. We just accounted for water. So it's probably going to be a little bit more, but it's pretty close. What if you're asked something about a different compound, like alcohol? Can you use this? No, you cannot use it. You need more information because this is only, only true for water. Okay, ladies and gents, that will end this one. I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.